Guys, we're in trouble. We need help. I'll go get help. So you travel between universes to get the Ghostbusters help. You didn't think they were on a holiday, a mission out of town, and didn't want to deal with your BS at the moment? Or you, they might be dead. Then y'all really been SOL. Hello there everyone and welcome to my second comic review. And yes, it's the sequel to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters title, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters 2. I know there's no subtitle, just go with it. Hit it! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters 2 is the second crossover between two beloved franchises. It was published by IDW and has also had a total of five parts from November 1st, 2017 to November 29th, 2017. Surprisingly, both teens and their comic series are within continuity of the story. The Turtles continuity, the story is preceded by the trial of Crane and followed by the invasion of the Triceratons. The Ghostbusters continuity is preceded by Ghostbusters 101 and followed by the Ghostbusters crossing over. More on that, but not too soon. Spoilers ahead if you haven't read either comic series or this one in particular. So without further ado, let's get into it. The Ghostbusters are wrapping up a job capturing the girls per usual. Ray wants to change the scenery like handling cases around the world. I mean, that's cool and all, Ray, but unless you train more Ghostbusters to protect the city, you might as well put that in your spank bank. Just saying. Peter says that the psychokinetic energy makes up the insulation between dimensions, while Winston adds on saying that it could tie into purgatory. Meanwhile, in actual purgatory, Darius Dunn, an old crime boss that was killed by Splinter for not conforming to Splinter being the head of the Foot Clan. Yes, Master Splinter is the head of the Foot Clan. Darius is pissed that Splinter took over that everything he worked hard to build. Another ghost, Bronx Universe, showing him his old stomping grounds due to the boy only needs to be used to watch over family and friends. Bronson stupidly offers Darius a way to get revenge. He knows of beings that can travel dimensions, but at a hefty price. But Darius doesn't care. Anything for vengeance, I guess. Back at the Ghostbusters dimension, Egon and Ray are working on a monitor for their own interdimensional device. They then get a breach and it's Donatello that comes through. Like I said before, what if the Ghostbusters weren't there or weren't in their best mental state at the moment? They would have been fucked. But I'm glad they are greeting him with open arms. Donatello explains on what happened. The turtles were attacked by extra dimensional beings while returning from Dimension X. It makes matters worse when they morph into more horrific versions of the turtles. The turtles fight, but they couldn't touch them. Ray is amazed on how Donatello knows their dimensional coordinates by heart. However, Egon states that they keep in touch, which is very proactive in my opinion. Egon states that the entities sound very familiar. Another breach happens and Ray recognizes them as the Collectors, implying that they have dealt with them before, but there was no real final confrontation. They grab and kidnap Donatello. The Collectors warn the, the Ghostbusters not to interfere or they will come back for them. The Ghostbusters wonder why the Collectors are after the Turtles, stating that they must have pissed someone off very powerfully. Egon says that the Collectors left behind Ectoplasm. They use that to analyze it to pinpoint the Turtles' location. Donatello gets slammed back into Purgatory without help, much to Raphael's disappointment. But Leonardo tells them to calm down so they can come up with an actual plan. A voice shouts out there is no escape. It took a minute, but they figure out that it's Darius done. He plans to keep the Turtles there until their master Splinter dies, and he disappears. Donatello says that it could take years. Leonardo sympathizes with Darius, but quickly wants to focus on finding shelter. But they hear familiar family voices saying that won't be necessary. It was the Ghostbusters. The Turtles felt they were safe, but Ray says that it's not that simple and hands Donatello the device. He instructs Donatello to step through the portal and that Egon is waiting for him. The others wanted to know why they can't leave yet. Winston answers that it will take some doing. Well, that doesn't sound vague at all. Donatello steps through and he is greeted by Egon. Egon explains that the device that Donatello is wearing is a repurposed psychic communication that him and Ray developed. Now the collectors will see Donatello as Winston and vice versa, but it won't last long. The rest of the Ghostbusters are distractions as they use their own portal to further obscure Donatello's presence. He wanted Donatello there for his understanding and transdimensional mechanics. Egon also explains that even though the collectors are powerful and can travel between dimensions, they have a weakness. They work as a single unit, so having separate trails in different dimensions will buy them some time until they can apparently get them out. Donatello asks how did they come up with this in a short amount of time. Egon says that time works differently to where it was three weeks since they last saw Donatello, but for Donatello it was only a few minutes. Egon gives some bad news that the others have less than a day to stall so with that being said Donatello wants to get to work immediately, ending part one. 
part two begins with the other Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters throwing off the trailers of collectors by jumping through different dimensions and some artwork looks familiar from different movies and TV shows. That was neat. We join Leonardo and Winston as they are attacked by ghosts. Reason being is that cheering up a psycho created energy can bring out ghosts. Back at the lab, Donatello and Egon, while doing professional banter, come up with an idea on how to get the collectors that can't escape before they get trapped. We catch up with Ray and Raphael in an undisclosed dimension. Ray says that they are safe for now from whatever was chasing them. Raphael was so sure and feels that something wasn't right. Ray checks with his device and Raphael was right. They are attacked by a ghost and they get pinned down and Raphael tried to grab his weapon but he was knocked out by the ghost. We jump over to Peter and Michelangelo in another dimension in New York. Peter says that the device needs to charge up for a while. So they walk around and they see that the humanoid animals are the dominant species on the planet and Michelangelo will fit right in as long as he has on clothes. Michelangelo then bumps into a rat that looks like Master Splinter and Peter notices Michelangelo's mood change and he answers that his brothers and Master Splinter had a falling out. Michelangelo thought he was tough enough to deal with it but he breaks down and gives Peter a hug. Since Peter is a psychiatrist, he offers his services up to Michelangelo to tell him what happened. And what he says completely blew my mind, and this backs up on how the comics are far better than the movies or TV shows. Michelangelo explains that the Turtles and the Master Splinter are reincarnated people from feudal Japan, and Darius Dunn killed them and was resurrected, and they had a final conflict with him, and they won. Master Splinter took it too far and beheaded him. Master Splinter then assumes control of the Foot Clan. Peter says that he now knows why Michelangelo was down. He saw what his father used to be, and now it's hard for him to deal with the person that Master Splinter is now. Michelangelo was surprised that Peter actually said something helpful. Michelangelo wonders if there are Ghostbusters in this dimension, and just when he asked that, they are immediately confronted by turtles dressed in Ghostbusters gear. They capture Peter and mistaken him for a demon. Winston and Leonardo are transported to a post-apocalyptic dimension and they are immediately attacked. They both fight them off in the most badass way, showing great teamwork also. Winston gets excited that he can use his weapons on robots. Leonardo deduces that they are on a world that was built for fighting, like a battle world. They find cover and Leonardo starts to blame himself that Darius was after them. Leonardo was Splinter's Chuni, basically second in command, and he felt that he had the power to talk some sense into him. Winston reminds Leonardo that he's still a teenager, so it couldn't have been easy. He then states that he hopes that the others will make the necessary modifications to the portal. Leonardo see that's weird because Winston's starting to sound like Donatello. Back at the lab, the device on Donatello's head short circuits and Egon checks on him. Egon noticed that Donatello's speech patterns are starting to sound like Winston and vice versa. Then Donatello sees the collectors and says that they are running out of time. Part 2 ends with Donatello getting the idea to build proton ninja arsenals. Part 3 goes back to purgatory and this will be the first time we see Darius since part 1. And he's not pleased that the turtles were not where he left them. Bronson being cricket saying that these things happen and the only certainty is uncertainty. Darius lashes out at Bronson. I mean, who wouldn't? you think if I was in the same state and wanted a revenge, the last thing I would need is some fortune cookie bullshit. Meanwhile, back in the animal world, Peter is taken by this world's Ghostbusters. Michelangelo follows as he gets into the base and tries to free Peter, but is caught. We catch up with Raphael and Ray as their bodies are possessed by ghost vikings, and they see their two bodies fight. Ray tries to reason with them, but they all laugh at them. Raphael goes in and says that you have to take back what is yours. God, I relate to this line so much. But Raphael gets pushed back from the ghost vikings. We go back to Egon and Donatello. They were testing out the proton bow staff that Donatello had built, and despite the struggle, the test was success. Meanwhile, back in the battle world, Winston was about to use the recharge for the remote. However, it was taken by a mutant frog. The two chases the mutant frog and they were both meet up by with the frog and his brothers. They demand Winston's proton pack, but you know that wasn't going to happen. They both kick the mutant frog's asses and get the portal remote back, and then they are confronted by the collectors. They fight them, however, they were unexpectedly called away. Winston and Leonardo don't know what happened, but they manage to open up a portal and goes right through. Back at Purgatory, the Collectors are furious at Darius for summoning them back. Bronson tried to plead with them, despite Darius feeling patronized by that. The Collectors want another fee from Darius, but this time they will take Darius' entire soul. They assume his soul, but it starts to poison him. Darius assumes control of all the Collectors, making him powered indefinitely, and is free to do whatever. First, they will deal with the Turtles. Back in the animal world, Michelangelo convinces the Ghost Bus Turtles that they are not ghosts or demons. They make their apologies and leave that dimension. Over at the Ghost Vikings dimension, Raphael and Ray manage to get Raphael's body back, expelling the ghosts. The Ghost Vikings were angry and tried attacking them all at once, but they managed to escape. They both make it through and they bump into the others. Soon after, Egon and Donatello complete the weapons and join the rest of the group. 
They all think it was by chance that they all made it to the same dimension, but they hear a voice saying that it's not a coincidence. It was a shadow of a woman saying that she called her sons to her. The turtles were shocked that it was their mother. The turtles have a heartfelt reunion with their mother. Winston explains that her name is Tang Shen. She was killed hundreds of years ago by the Shredder. He knows it's because of the melding of his and Donatello's mind. Raphael asks if they are in heaven. She replies that life itself is an illusion and a dream. She says on how much she misses them and she had been watching them the whole time. She talks about them, each telling them how proud she is of them. Ray interrupts and tries to support what she's saying with science, but she thanks them for helping her sons out. Peter tried to join in the conversation, but Tang Shen gives him a stern look, shutting him up quick. She gives him a heads up that their enemy is catching up to them. She feels guilty that she could not do more, but she could only offer her love. They say their goodbyes and she fades away. The group manages to make back to the Ghostbusters dimension. Donatello gives the rest of the turtles their proton ninja weapons as they prepare to fight. At Central Park, Darius, now assumed the collectors, makes it there and he's confronted by Peter. He distracts them long enough so the turtles can make their move and the final fight began. Soon the Ghostbusters give their support, firing their proton packs, capturing them in the stream. They manage to send Darius in a containment unit, sealing him away forever. The series ends with the turtles bidding farewell to the Ghostbusters and thanking them for all their help, wanting to meet up to where there's no danger that has to break them all together. I believe that the first story, when they first met, was far better. Don't get me wrong, I like this one too, but I felt that it was shorter and kind of anticlimactic, even though it was five parts. The story mainly focused on the turtles and the Ghostbusters take a back seat and be like confidants. Despite the fact that the collectors were part of the Ghostbusters Rose Gallery, the turtles were going through a rough time due to what happened with their master Splinter taking over the Foot Clan. It hit Leonardo and Michelangelo the most. Leonardo went through a depressive state while on the battle world, blaming himself for what happened. Michelangelo had a PTSD for seeing a humanoid rat that looked just like Master Splinter. Luckily, they were both pep talked by Peter and Winston. The turtles seeing their mother again was both heartwarming and sad. See, the turtles and the Splinter were previously murdered by the Shredder and they were reincarnated hundreds of years later. Darius Dunn was a crime boss of the Street Phantoms. He was later defeated and was asked to surrender, but he refused. So Splinter coldly orders Darius' execution, which led into the crossover. The Collectors are powerful Class 6 trans-dimensional entities. They are basically hired demons that can take out anyone for a piece of the client's soul. They came after the Ghostbusters but was defeated and sent back to Purgatory. This crossover was a small filler story for both franchises coming off huge story arcs. Like I said, it was a good read and small character development for the Turtles. I would recommend this but I don't want to underwhelm you, if that's a word I can uh, use. Well, that's all for today. If there's a comic book, TV show, anime, Spanish show, video idea, or movie, let me know in the comments. You can also direct message me on Instagram or email me. I will leave that all in the description below. Like always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you all next time.